CataractCoach.com. Resident Case 124 is pretty good. Let's all come together and offer advice to help the young surgeon in training here. So let's take a look here. I like the draping. Very nice. Lid speculum good position. Lid margin sequestered. A little bit of dye there or ink mark on the paracentesis blade. So you can see the pair. That's a smart move. I like that idea. And now let's see going inside, probably with some anesthetic. Notice how the eyes in primary, I like that. Do you know about retina rounds? If you're a young surgeon, if you're a resident, you better be signed up for retinarounds.com. This is material that you need to know. It's gonna teach you how to be a better ophthalmologist, even if you just do cataract surgery like me. You don't have to be a retina surgeon, check it out. I promise you're gonna love it. Here comes the viscoelastic. Nice fill of the viscoelastic here. That looks really good. And oh, now fixating the eye with the cannula of the viscoelastic and now coming with the keratome. Let's watch the incision. Looks pretty reasonable. And let's see the overall incision. I don't like that dimple down thing, but maybe your attending told you to do that. That's okay, not a bad incision, I'll take it. And now let's see the capsule rex. I like going in with just the forceps, no scissotome needed. Going in with forceps here, poking in in the middle. And okay, you got a flap there and get that going. And now flipping it around. I like the technique. Good, good job floating in the incision. There comes the rexus. Again, hard to do a beautiful rexus. It really is. It does take a lot of practice here. And you're coming around nicely. I like it. It's very well controlled. It's not, it's not a baby rexus, right? I was telling you, don't make a baby rexus. Now continuing it. And uh, let's see, one more grab. And you can grab it as many times as you need to. And that's complete. That's pretty good. Now it's not really well centered but I think it'll be sufficient to overlap the optic 360. Now, releasing some viscoelastic. Okay, let's watch the hydro dissection here. And now here's a flat end cannula going in a little bit of hydro dissection. There's a good fluid wave, tap the center. And then let's see hydro dissection on the other side too. And then tap the center. That looks good. Let's see if it spins. Remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. Let's see, is it gonna spin? E almost, 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 try again. A little more hydro dissection, maybe. Now try again. Okay, is it going to spin? Uh, maybe. I'm not 100% convinced. If it spins, it's going to make your life a lot easier when you manipulate the nucleus within the bag. Let's see the technique can be used here. Here comes a FACO probe. Got that pink sleeve on, so probably a 2.4-ish incision, something like that. And let's see. Take, I like to go inside the arm position one. I don't like to go in dry, but you do you. And now let's take a look here. I also like to use the infusion to squirt the cornea before I enter the eye. See how the cornea is a little dried out now? You can't always rely on your scrub tech. He or she may be doing something else. Now, going in here with the probe, let's see the groove down the middle probably. There you go. So think about it. What do you think the technique here is going to be? Probably stop and chop, maybe divide and conquer. And what do you think the settings are? Well, this part, you don't need a whole lot of vacuum, so probably less than 100 millimeters of mercury. You need some reasonable FACO power here in order to get through this thing, and that's good. So there's a good looking groove right down the middle here. Maybe gonna widen up a little bit. Nope, gonna go in here with a chopper or second instrument. So here comes the FACO probe in the groove, the chopper as well. And now let's get this split apart. Boom, nicely done. I like how you propagate it all the way through. This is a nucleus with a reasonable amount of density here. Now that we have two halves, looks like we're gonna do a chop. So stop and chop here. Horizontal chop going up, coming up right here. That looks good. Very nicely done, nice quarter. I'd actually get that quarter out first. Yeah, because it makes it a lot easier. You have more room to maneuver. You don't really need to sub-chop it anymore. You can just aspirate that thing down, a little bit of FACO power, that looks great. That makes it a lot easier, a lot more room in the bag to maneuver now. So now I'd get out the other quarter. Yep, rotate it around a little bit, put, bring the piece in front of you. Buzz in a little bit, now go to vacuum, bring the piece up, very good. Hey, even another sub-chop, beautiful. And get these pieces out nice and easy. Now look at the anterior chamber. There's a little bit of a bounce in the anterior chamber. See how the eye is also being pushed a little bit to the nasal canthus. Get the eye back in primary. Put the right hand down here. You're lifting up on the right hand is the problem. Now rotate it around. You have a half left in the bag, half a nucleus. Buzz into the hemi-nucleus. Bring it forwards. Create a gap there. Get the chop around the equator. Almost, almost, there it is. And now you've got a beautiful chop. Fantastic technique here. Again, try get the eye back in primary. Put the right hand down a little bit. See how it's coming off your screen there, going to the top of your screen, which is the patient's nasal because the surgeon's sitting temporal. That's better. Look at, that's a lot better. Good job. But look at the AC bounce. There's a little bit of fluidic instability. I'd increase the infusion here or decrease your outflow. 
You got to be very careful here not to cause too much chamber instability here. There's the last piece. Remember that chopper in the safe position next time. Be careful here. Some surgeons like to remove the chopper as the last piece is coming out. Why? Because think about it. Where is the source of outflow? It's what you aspirate, but it's also what leaks through the incision. So if you have a paracentesis that's leaking because your chopper is not floating in it, if you take the chopper out, the para will close. And therefore, you have better chamber stability here. So now here at the end, time for some cortex removal. Let's check that out. That cortex removal should co be coming up right about now here. we go. Looks like a coaxial IA probe. That looks great. And I like how you take your time to adjust the tip here a little bit. So coming inside the eye. Again, I like to go in the eye position one. I like to go in. I don't like to go in dry. And so here, aspirating out that cortex. Really not a whole lot of cortex left here. That looks great. Now, if you've done 100 cases already, this is case 124. It's pretty good. So you want to take your time and really clean up the capsular bag here a little bit. At the beginning, when you're still learning FACO, you're a little bit more cautious and you're afraid to kind of go too close to the capsule. But as you get more and more comfortable, you'll do more of the capsule cleanup. Now, again, that looks like a reasonable case so far. Let's get the viscoelastic in. I like the incision, by the way. At the beginning, it wasn't, I wasn't so sure, but now you can see the outline of it because it's a little bit hydrated from all the uh, surgery that's been happening. And now let's see, injecting viscoelastic. Interesting with this soft tip on the cannula. That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. And now let's see the lens insertion. So again, you're doing a great job. For case 124, I think you're doing a great job. You need to work on that rex. It's not the prettiest rex. It's reasonable for case 124. Don't get me wrong. But you can hold yourself to a higher standard. Let's see the lens going inside the eye now. And let's see. Looks like a two-handed injector. So there's the eye getting out of primary to deliver it. Now get the eye back at primary. That's pretty good. Good job. You must have watched my video for early in the week. The video we had just five, four or five days ago was about how to do wound assessed appropriately. Now, I like to get the lens in the bag more with a second instrument, but you can just use the IA probe. Now, removing viscoelastic from behind the lens, that's a good move because at some point you're going to start doing torque lenses, right? So you'll need to get that viscoelastic out. So I like that. Good hands. You are doing a beautiful job here. Keep up the great work. So my advice to you is there are times about the case where the eye wasn't in primary. So try a little bit harder to keep that in primary. Again, your rexus should be advanced a little bit more than this. So keep working on the rexus. And look at that. At the end, though, the rexus does overlap the optic. Interestingly enough, it's overlap 360. Is the optic totally centered, though? Well, who knows? Let's see the hydration of the incision. Looks pretty good. Wow, it looks good. Be careful. You're a little too close to decimates, so you get a decimate attachment. So I pull back a little bit. If you watch me operate, I'm a little more cautious with that, but it looks, still looks great. Now look at that. Maybe I misspoke, but the rex looks pretty damn good now. Now it's really overlapping the Optic 360, and maybe it wasn't decentered too much. Now let's see the incisions here. Check it with the Wexel sponge. I'll get the IOP up a little bit higher. You're a young, young doctor. Don't leave the IOP like a 10. I'd rather have the IOP like a 20, so maybe put the pressure up a little bit. But again, beautiful job. Let's check here. Man, what are we going to do at the end here? A little more BSS? Okay. Again, keep up the good work. Proud of you. Can you leave a comment below and let this young doctor know what he or she could do to improve further? And remember, you got to sign up for Cataract Coach Daily email and also the Retinarounds email. Just don't make me keep asking you.